This is a quick look at the launch pad inside the Bloomberg Professional Service. It's a really incredible um, and powerful tool. Um, this is actually a look at what I uh, keep in the background on my desktop when the markets are open each day, and I look at it each morning uh, before the market open, and it's a quick snapshot of uh, all kinds of things. And let's just walk through it. I'll show you how this works, and you'll get some insight into what I think is a, a useful way to kind of get my head around what's going on in the markets. So very top, uh, these are actually the foreign uh, stock exchanges, a handful of them. Um, by looking at it quickly, I can see that they're all in the green this morning. Uh, starting with the FTSE is up eight tenths of a percent. That's the very top one. Uh, and then we have the uh, German DAX, which is up 1.2%. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong is up a percent. Uh, the Nikkei is up close to 2% in Japan. And up in Shanghai, uh, the Shanghai Composite is up 3.5%. The next group are our U.S. index futures. So we can see our Dow futures, S&P futures, and NASDAQ futures are all up between 3 tenths and 4 tenths of a percent. And then right below that are yesterday's closes on our major U.S. indexes. The Dow was off 1%, S&P off 6 tenths of a percent, and the NASDAQ off of a half a percent. So right there, I've got a snapshot of what's going on with the equity indexes. These are the indexes, um, the little sub-indexes, I'll call them, of U.S. markets. So this is the Russell 2000 at the top. Yesterday's close was off 3 tenths of a percent. Uh, interesting that the small caps didn't sell off as much as the large caps. So some people say that that's a bullish sign. Uh, with the volatility in the markets these days, you know, give or take, you can have one big company or whatever swing things. So you got to be a little bit careful with those kind of rules of thumb. Next is the Dow Transport uh, average from yesterday off nine tenths of a percent, and the next is the Philly uh, Semiconductor Index, which was off six tenths of a percent. And then just below that is my gold and silver group. Um, Basically, it's two different uh, gold futures things. Both basically, you can see the same. Uh, Twelve dollars and I mean one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars uh, plus. Uh, gold is up sharply, obviously today, up two percent uh, this morning from yesterday. And silver is up eight tenths of a percent. And then next is uh, my base metals commodities group. So at the top, copper is rebounding off of a sharp sell-off yesterday uh, into this morning. And then these are yesterday's closes on aluminum, lead, nickel, zinc. Uh, and iron ore, and I keep my eye on those. Next up is crude oil, natural gas, uh, coal, and uh, the CRB index, as well as corn, wheat, and soy. Uh, through here, we can see that oil is rebounding nicely off of the $45 a barrel mark, uh, breaking through 50 uh, healthily this morning. So that's going to be a big story in the markets today, for sure. Um, Brent, in fact, West Texas is now more expensive than Brent. A little bit of a sidebar, that's going to make it a challenge for U.S.-based refiners who have been benefiting in the, historically over the last couple of years from a cheaper West Texas intermediate crude to the international Brent crude. And so it's made the U.S.-based refiners more competitive against foreign refiners. Well, now that's switching, and all of a sudden U.S.-based refiners find themselves paying at least as much, if not more, for their crude oil than international refiners. So that's a sub-piece of the story that's an important one uh, that we need to keep our eye on, um, or at least I'm going to be watching. Natural gas is rebounding. Uh, it's been a little bit colder uh, in the Northeast and in parts of the country, um, so it's coming back off of being in the low $3 range. Um, and coal has been mired in the muck. I remember looking at it last fall or maybe midsummer, uh, and it was maybe at $70. Um, and then corn, wheat, and soy. Next in blue are my U.S. Treasury yield group, 30-year, uh, 10-year, 5-year, 2-year. I can take a quick look there and, what's, and see what's going on with yields. Uh, the 2-year, for example, I remember seeing it a week and a half ago. It was uh, almost to 70 uh, basis points, and now it's back down to 48 and off again this morning. Um, and then we have some Chinese yields that I look at, uh, the 10-year Chinese uh, treasury, if you will. Uh, and then the uh, dollar index is the green line. So this is my major currency group. The big story now is, and the reason this huge green bar is here, is that the Swiss have decided to let the Swiss franc trade freely. They had been anchoring it to around um, one Swiss, Swiss franc to 1.2 euro, I think, uh, over the last few years. And now all of a sudden they've let that go. So if you're getting paid in Swiss francs, you're a happy guy this morning because you woke up and at least against this numbers against the U.S. dollar, you're 16% richer. Your uh, Swiss franc 
is gained strength because you stopped tying to the euro that was weakening. Interestingly, the euro is down below 1.17 this morning. That's a multi-year uh, weakness level against the U.S. dollar, uh, and that's why the Swiss gave up their anchoring to the weakening euro. Um, it wasn't consistent with what's going on in their view, anyway, with the Swiss economy and what where the Swiss currency should be. Um, so it was wound up like a rubber band, and when they let it go free, it whoop, got strong, very strong, 16%, as you can see. Uh, we'll move on. Canadian dollar, you can see it's at one point, close to 1.2. Uh, that's off uh, from parity, where a U.S. dollar would buy a Canadian dollar uh, a couple of years ago. Now a U.S. dollar will buy 1.2 Canadian dollars. So you've gotten poorer if you've been uh, getting paid in Canadian dollars. Swedish krona is up next, and then below that is a big bucket of emerging market currencies. Uh, we've got the Chinese uh, renminbi uh, down there, and then we get in the Russian ruble. Uh, which has just crashed uh, in the last nine months. Uh, this 60 was a 30-ish about nine months ago. Um, so your dollar would buy, would have only bought 32 or so rubles nine months ago. Now it's buying 64 of them. The ruble has weakened tremendously. Uh, Turkish lira is next. Hungarian foreign. I was in Budapest a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Hungarian foreign has gotten significantly weaker two weeks ago. Uh, my dollar was buying 250 for it, which was a deal over there. Now it would buy 275. Um, and then we move on through Australian dollar, Mexican peso, Brazilian, Chile, Argentina, India. I've got my eye on this one. Forecasters are saying the Indian rupee might weaken to 64 to the dollar through 2015. Um, I'm not expecting that. I think that India has got some positive tailwinds uh, there. And I'm not expecting any weakness, but the current, the foreign watching this uh, rupee exchange rate against the dollar will kind of give us an early view as to whether the the currency market anyway thinks that there's some relative weakness going on in India. But uh, so I've got my eye on this 62. It'll be interesting to see if it gets down into you know the 61 or even 60 range this year. That means that that 64 story is is uh, becoming less right. <laughs> um, and then we move down to. Uh, the Indian uh, rupiah and the Thai baht. I just keep my eye on those. Now the interesting power of this, the way I've got this set up, I've got this graph uh, window uh, linked and I can do some things in that and you'll see me paste these graphs on my uh, Facebook page from time to time. I'll take a screenshot and throw them over there. Uh, right now this is a three-day chart of the spiders, the uh, S&P 500 uh, ETF SPY where I did some graphics and pasted some stuff. But what's powerful about this is let's say we want to look at what's happened with the two-year. I can click this guy, drag it into this window, and immediately the chart is replaced with the chart of that two year. Now let's, and, and then I can click in here and start to change the uh, period as well as the uh, um, tick marks, if you will. So uh, I can click right here and get a six month, one day chart of the two year. And you can see what I was talking about. The two year was up above 70 back on, you can see the date there. Right at the right around Christmas, and then major uh, buying in the two-year space, which drove the yield sharply lower and has for the last couple of weeks. Uh, we can click on five-year. You can see the trend in the two-year over the last five years, and it's been a really volatile ride through uh, the end of 2014. And I pointed some of this out in my most recent newsletter. But anyway, that's the the power of it. Um, so anytime I'm looking at something over here, and these are my daily numbers, and I want to get a historical look at it, like you can look at the Swiss franc, and here's the five-year chart of the Swiss franc, and you can see this is, I mean, this will be something that foreign currency guys are talking about big time. I mean, this is a straight readjustment of the Swiss franc. Um, and you can see where it, where it went was straight down, and this is why zooming out and quickly looking at these things, you can begin to see stories develop about, well, why did it stop there? Well, that's where the Swiss franc was uh, in the uh, peak of its strength back in uh, 2000 and early 2014. Um, again, you know, the power of this, and I'm thinking about this in the context of the euro. I can drag the euro over here real quick. Same chart, just the euro, and you can see, well, the euro did. Uh, this is the inverse of it. Stand by. Let me pull this guy over here, and you can see the you can see how the euro, again, strengthened the spring, up it goes, and this is why the Swiss untied from it. 
So that's a quick look at what I uh, have running in the background and a little bit of the power of the launch pad uh, inside the Bloomberg Professional.